Welcome back to my YouTube channel. In today's video, we're going to discuss the letter of reference for SI. The previous two videos have covered how to apply to a university in Sweden, and we've also covered the proof of work and leadership experience. In today's video, we're going to look at how to write out the letter of reference. A letter of reference is supposed to be written by the referee themselves but sometimes referees ask for a draft and this can be helpful if your referee has asked you to submit a draft for them to consider as they are working on writing a letter of reference for you one thing is that you've got to highlight the things that you included in your work experience and leadership experience plus your cv they've got to be able to tie into what your referee is going to state in fact another tip it's good that you give your reference all the documents that you are going to submit so that they have an idea on the areas that they need to be able to specifically speak on that align to all the other documents that you submit Meeting. keep that in mind if you'd like support with your application in the description box i'll also leave a link where you can book for a one-on-one -on -one and i'll be able to assist you with your application so we'll start off by going through the instructions which are very very key and if you've gone through the instructions already you can jump to where i get into the explanation of the form itself but i implore you to read along the instructions with me actually when i'm reviewing applications i read instructions and questions every single time i have an application i'll read it more than five times so this is an opportunity to for you to read along and make sure that you have everything covered letter of reference form instructions the referee is expected to start to state an opinion of the applicant from a professional perspective on behalf of the referred organization and will thereby provide an important supplement to the letter of motivation and the cv for your scholarship application to be eligible for the SI, you must provide two different letters of reference. At least one letter of reference must be based on your work experience. Must. The second letter of reference can be based on your work as well, but can also be an academic reference based on your studies at university. However, it will be a merit if the second letter of reference is based on your involvement in networks or civil society organizations outside of your regular work. So keep that in mind. Please Please utilize that if you have it. Who can fill out the letter of reference? The referee should be someone who knows you in a professional rather than private manner. In fact, I get quite a number of people who come to me asking me to be their references, but if I've not worked with you directly, I'm not able to. I need to be able to know you in a professional manner rather than in a private manner. It does not have to be your direct manager. For instance, it can be an HR manager or the head of the organization. As long as the person can comment on your work on behalf of your employer. If you work in a family business, if you are an owner of a business, or if you do freelance work, we can accept a signature from a client or a staff who works at your company who is not your family member. And clients should be companies or organizations, not private individuals, and are only allowed to certify the working hours that you have worked for them. The stamp should be the official stamp of the company or organization. If you do freelance work, you may also ask an employee at the professional association or agency where you are registered as a freelancer or receive assignments from to be your referee and to sign and stamp the letter of reference. Examples of people who cannot be used as a referee are co-workers, family members, last relative partners or friends, individuals who demand compensation in any form from you in order to give you a statement of reference. Requirement, the letter of reference must be completed in English or alternatively translated by a notary public with the notary official stamp. The original letter of reference or the English translation should not exceed two pages excluding the instruction page. Any additional pages will be disregarded. To be valid, the letter must be completed, dated, signed by the referee and stamped by the referred company or organization university at which you worked or studied and which the referee represents. The stamp can be in any language as long as it is in the official stamp of the referring organization. If your referee has changed job and is unable to represent your former or current employer, we must recommend that you find another referee who still works at the 
company organization and is able to comment on your work performance. If your employer does not have any stamp, we recommend that you provide a letter of reference based on your experience at another organization. Very key. If you are not able to get a traditional stamp for your reference letter, you could explore the possibility to sign the document with a digital signature or stamp. However, please note that a traditional stamp is preferred. If it is the only work experience you have, we may accept an official stamp of a notary office. However, your referee still needs to fill in the template and sign it on behalf of your employer. The notary public needs to certify in English that the referee is authorized to represent the referred organization and to submit the letter of reference for you. Submission. You must merge the two letters of reference into one PDF document before submission. Do not include the instructions in the file. Please note. Please present the letter based on your work experience first. If both of your letters are based on your work, please sort them in reverse chronological order. So reverse chronological order means the most recent first. If any letter is not written in English by your referee, you should present the translation from the notary office directly after the original letter in the same PDF document. Kindly note that when the letter of reference stretches to two pages, the referee's signature and the official stamp of the referring organization or notary are required at the bottom of both pages. Please keep that in mind. Authenticity. SI will carry out random checks on the applications and applicants to scrutinize any false or misleading information, including fabricated documentation. And should any false information be found, the applicant will be automatically disqualified and banned from applying for any SI scholarship program in the future. Any false information discovered during the scholarship period will cause a termination of the scholarship, and the scholarship holder will then have to refund the full scholarship amount to SI. Lastly, do you have any questions? You can check out the SI website and their FAQs. Before I get into the reference form, I would like to emphasize that SI is really big on your involvement in networks or civil society organizations outside your regular work. So if you do have this kind of experience, please do highlight it as this will be favorable. Now, to get us back into the letter of reference form again we have the bio data which if you went through the previous video is pretty similar we're using Aliko Dangote um, and Jacob Mosugu again the details in here are really fictitious so that's not an actual email address or phone number then when you get to what is the letter of reference based on under employment we have a drop down so you can choose any we chose employment you can choose one that suits you in fact we we have also involvement in networks or civil society organization outside of work. So if you have that, be keen to place it here and also be keen to place it in your leadership and work experience. In what capacity do you know the applicant? I'm a member of staff at Dangote Oil Refinery, working hours. So we get into the questions. So once again, whereas I've bolded and highlighted, please don't change the font or design of this particular form. I only did this so that I can be able to fully highlight what we are working on, but do not change the font or design of this document. In your view, how would an SI scholarship for master's studies in Sweden enhance the applicant's capacity for professional and academic growth? Now, while writing this, you need to make sure that you are highlighting how the SI scholarship specifically is going to enhance the applicant's capacity for both professional and academic growth. So here we wrote and stated that despite Nigeria being a prominent oil producer in Africa, the country relies on importing 70% of its refined oil products. This dependence has led to depleted foreign exchange reserves and persistent fuel shortages, among others. So we start off by writing a short problem statement and then the referee then further shows how you are able to solve this problem. 
problem. So to address this, Aliko spearheaded a team to negotiate land and construct Nigeria's largest oil refinery, resulting in significant savings of 30 billion in foreign exchange reserves and ensuring the country's self-sufficiency in refined petroleum products. You'll also recall that this was in the work experience. So here they are further emphasizing what was already stated in the work experience. To continue, however, despite these achievements, the company faces a challenge in aligning its goals with efficient and environmentally sustainable policies. Recognizing the need for innovative solutions, Aliko has decided to pursue a master's in leadership for sustainable development. This program, encompassing a course unit on leadership and sustainability, will equip him with the knowledge and skills to navigate the complex intersection of economic growth and environmental responsibility. This particular section speaks to how an SI scholarship for master's studies in Sweden will enhance the applicant's capacity for professional and academic growth. So we're able to see how the SI scholarship is going to do that. And to conclude this, we say an SI scholarship for master's studies in Sweden would provide Dangote with exposure to diverse perspectives and innovative approaches with a Swedish academic setting and can broaden his knowledge base and critical thinking skills. Collaborating with international peers and engaging with cutting-edge research in the field will contribute to a well-rounded academic experience. The scholarship's emphasis on leadership skills will empower him to effectively lead initiatives fostering positive changes not only with the organization but also contribute to sustainable development in Nigeria. So this fully covers the question, in your view, how would an SI scholarship for master's studies in Sweden enhance the applicant's capacity for professional and academic growth? So make sure that before your referee signs off, just proofread and see if your referee was able to answer the questions correctly. Next question, briefly comment on the applicant's capacity to contribute to and or drive social change in his or her context. To break it down first of all, comment on the applicant's capacity to contribute to and or drive social change in his or her context. So we need to see a level of social change. Nigeria has a second has the second highest burden of stunted children in the world with a national prevalence rate of 32% children under five. In a bid to fight malnutrition in Nigeria, Dangote started by creating Aliko Dangote Foundation Workforce Nutrition Program, which reaches up to 25,000 employees. The foundation has participated in the World Breastfeeding Week since 2018, working to educate employees on the benefits of breastfeeding through email, trainings, webinars, and seminars. The program has enabled the review of the maternity leave policy as well as the setup of breastfeeding rooms within the office. Outside the workforce, Dangote, through the foundation, has partnered with the African Development Bank and Banking on Nutrition to reduce malnutrition by 60% by 2025 through increase in production and consumption of self-nutritious food. One thing to look out for when you are writing this is the use of your STAR technique. By now, if you've been on this page for a minute, you know what a STAR technique is. What is the situation? What is the task? The action and the result. If you're not familiar with the STAR technique, I have a video explaining the STAR technique and the STAR technique is a technique of writing your application. So what is the situation in this case? This is the situation. Nigeria has the second highest burden of stunted children in the world with a national prevalence rate of 32% children under 5. That's the situation. What's the task at hand? In a bid to fight the malnutrition, you got a got a start by creating the task at hand is to fight malnutrition in Nigeria. What's the action taken? Now the action is Dangote started by creating the foundation and all this here is the action. Now the result is the program has enabled the review of the maternity leave policy as well as set up safe breastfeeding rooms within the office. This is the result. In fact, you continue to see the result as by 2025, 
five, there'll be a reduction in malnutrition by 60%. So this is the result. And therein you have your start technique. And the final question is assess the applicant's leadership potential and their ability to contribute to societal development through qualities like networking, determination, analytical and critical thinking, and communication. Please give a concrete example. For concrete examples, one must consider the STAR technique. What was the situation, the task, the action, and the result? While Nigeria drills and exports the most oil in Africa, the country continues to face oil shortages due to the fact that it doesn't refine oil but rather spends more on importing oil products. So now we get into seeing what they were asking for. Dangote's leadership acumen shines through his strategic approach to addressing Nigeria's persistent oil shortages. To rectify this, Dangote went on to initiate the drive to build the world's largest refinery that would refine up to 165,000 barrels of oil per day. So this covers the leadership aspect. Now for the networking, Dangote's networking skills played a vital role as he collaborated with a proficient team of 10 individuals under his guidance. Together, they successfully procured over 6,000 acres of industrial land in the Lekki Free Trade Zone. Using his analytical and critical thinking skill set, Dangote leveraged his established partnership with Africa Development Bank to secure a loan of $300 million, which demonstrates his adeptness at strategic financial planning and negotiation. Communication played a vital role throughout the entire process, from conveying the vision of the refinery to coordinating efforts with the team and securing financial support. Dangote's effective communication skills were instrumental in aligning stakeholders, fostering collaboration, and ultimately realizing the ambitious project. So with this, we've covered an example that clearly states out what Dangote's leadership potential and the ability to contribute to societal development through qualities like networking, determination, analytical and critical thinking, and communication. So ensure that your referee has clearly stated all these things in your reference letter that you are submitting to SI. That's it for today, and I know that there are so many documents that go into scholarship application, but always remember, it might be hard, but nothing is ever impossible. Good luck.